You just caught me reminiscing. Last time we made land, I uh, went out with a very sweet lass and had a wonderful time. And we were sitting at dinner, conversating about all sorts of deep things. And she said to me, Captain, one thing I've never been able to understand is cloning. So I thought about it long and hard and said, darling, that makes two of us. Welcome to Dark Star Reviews. As always, I'm your host, CJ Dark Star. And I've gotten some comments on a video of mine recently. So this episode of Dark Star is dedicated to a Mr. Joe Dirt who wanted to be seeing some more functional weapons. So today, we're looking at a fine functional weapon. Now, this one won't be sharp, but it is going to be very, very functional. What we have here is a single hand Viking style stage combat sword. So when you see them in the movies, clanging and banging around, these are the swords they'd be using. This is a 1095 tempered blade, rounded edged and round tipped. That way it's safe for combat fighting. It has a nice leather handle to make it look authentic. And as always, being how it's functional, it is full tag. That's this little piece you see right here sticking out of the pummel. That's the end of the blade itself. So I have some high hopes with this. Now the blade might appear wet and that's because they have a lot of oil on it. Now one thing most people don't know, with carbon steel such as this, you have to keep it oiled, otherwise it will rust or oxidize. A pirate like me has to worry about the salty sea air oxidizing this blade. For you folks at home, it would be touching the blade too much or just horrible care of it, leaving it outside, leaving the blood on it and not wiping it off. Well, other than that, it's got a good balance for a single hand and they've took the time to adorn it with what I can only imagine are some Viking runes. If you know anything about the runes, hit me up in the comment section and let me know what these mean. Well, all right, other than that, it has a beautiful fuller that runs down the blade that is designed to take weight off the blade without taking away from the uh, structural integrability of the blade. Other than that, a pretty basic sword, so a pretty basic explanation. Let's make port and we'll run it through its paces. So as you can tell by the beautiful weather, we're back on the damn island. We're gonna look at the sword, run it through its paces, and at the end I've got something special just for you, Mr. Joe Dirt. Let's see what the sword will do. All right, not a mark or a neck on it from the post. So we'll move on to the dowels. All right, brute force got us through the dowels. You can see here, the blade took some damage from the metal dowel at the bottom. But everything's still tight and still together. We'll move on to the sword killer. Now I flipped the sword killer over so we can see what new damage is done to it today. I think 
this sword beats the sword killer today. A few burrs, but it's still tight. And this sword would still be in good fighting order. Now, like I said, I've got a special surprise for you. This here, being how you want it to see functional, is one of the first training swords I ever used. As you can tell, I've already put it through its paces plenty of times. But, just for the hell of it, I'll show you what my own personal weapon can do. Well, my own personal collection gets a tad smaller today. Let's look at what we saw. Starting out with the one that we were originally looking at. Get some of the crap off of it so we can see it. The blade held up wonderfully. You can tell where we've made contact. But it definitely beat the uh, sword killer into submission. It's not loose, there's no wiggle to it. We did start to lose some of the leather on the handle here. But all in all, it's a good sturdy sword that I would recommend practicing with. And of course, when you're banging it against concrete and things like that, you have to expect tragedies to happen. Speaking of tragedies, my own practice sword lost today against the sword killer. Now I pointed out when we were on land, I've had this sword for I, probably 15 years now and I've practiced with it regularly, as you can tell by all the damage that was previously done to it before it finally uh, failed on the sword killer. As you can tell, the tip broke right off after years of abuse and this became loose on me now the quillins being loose i'm not so concerned about because as you can tell like the other one that is the tang right there the blade and the damage around it i've already done this fix a couple times to this sword a hammer on both sides of that would tighten all this back up and then you could just pound that tang flat and this would be tight again. But as far as that goes, there'd be no fix in that without a lot of work. So that might be one best left for the blacksmith friend of mine. And it looks like I'd be fighting short sword next time I practice. Well, Mr. Joe Dirt, I apologize that my uh, special surprise sort of fell flat, but I hope you enjoyed the episode anyway. So if you see the like button, talk him into doing a two-man rendition of the Three Stooges and beat him till he's black and blue. Nuck, nuck, nuck. Woo! And we'll see you next time, lads.